How's it going guys? Coffee here. Today I wanted to go over my recommended league starters for the SS3 uh, Twilight Nightmare season for Torchlight Infinite. Uh, first things first, if you are a fully free-to-play player and you're just brand new to the game, you don't have anything unlocked, the character that I'm going to recommend for your first league starter is going to be a Frostfire Gemma um, using Thundercloud. The guide that I actually released for this uh, last season is still going to be perfectly fine. Everything is going to be exactly the same for Gemma. Uh, I will leave a link down to this video down below. Specifically, just because there isn't anything that has changed in it, um, I have some notes down below kind of explaining what gear to be starting off with, working, your all the way, working yourself all the way up to spending about 100 um, FE. From there, what this build really specializes in is ensuring that you are able to comfortably farm um, T7 maps for a ton of currency. And at that point, you can transition the build into either like pushing that specific thundercloud really, really deep. Or um, if you go to Milky BK's channel, he actually has a really, really good guide on pushing um, Gemma into like a much deeper uh, setup using Ignite and Path of Flames. So um, personally, myself, whenever I end up do end up playing Gemma, it's purely just a farming build for me. I'm just trying to farm a bunch of currency while it's on T7 and just do maps really, really fast. And I've never actually pushed her past that myself. But if you do want to do that, again, check out Milky BK's channel afterwards. Like, this is a great starter to get you going and get that, uh, you know, big initial money. And then after you have that, then you end up taking that money and you end up transitioning the build into something else. For people who do have either hero tokens laying around and they are... But they're still free to play but they played last season so they have 100 hero tokens in order to buy another hero my recommendation is going to be frost iris um there were a little bit of changes to frost iris but from my take on the math i'm fairly positive this is going to end up being an overall buff for the character she was already incredibly strong based off of um the stuff from last league especially once you actually get into the um setup where you are actually taking advantage of her hero memory with that um you end up getting to a point where you're like easily scaling the build into uh hundreds of you know 99 billion damage or more you know trillions of damage it can really get there um and from my testing with the build even with just basically a character that had basically nothing right you had the the sage's foresight or like this is an item that you get at like level 16 level 20 something like that um, just with this i was still getting about 60 million dps um, which is more than enough to comfortably farm tier sevens in order to farm all the currency you need in order to buy the actual end game setup of frost iris if you do end up looking over my channel i have um, videos covering the the full end game frost iris build this frost iris starter that i did for the ss3 preseason is actually really really nice um, I cover most everything but I did update the actual tree here for kind of what you want to be because the uh, preseason had some special things with ring of ice so the majority of everything in that video is perfectly fine um, but the tree itself does change because of the fact that we aren't using ring of ice um, you can actually still level with that it just means you'd be clicking an extra button but I know that's not for everyone and some people just want to play the uh, frost spirit right away so from my testing, the Frost Spirit for leveling even with no memory, just basically zero gear, the Frost Spirit is out damaging the Fire and Lightning Spirits by about um, three times more damage. So I mean, I am going to recommend basically sticking with that. And then once you transition to actually using and getting the legendary memory for the Frost Spirit, your damage is actually just going to continue to go through the roof even more. Um, that's where you'll see yourself getting into the hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of damage very, very quickly. And with that, um, that's going to be your, um, best bet there. So that memory itself, um, it is covered in the other videos, but it is this to you who are calm. Uh, first you end up just buying one of these with a four second cooldown, which is going to be cheaper. And then you can eventually get to the point where you can afford a three second one. Um, it's a lot to go over just in this video. So I'm just going to put links to the other videos because there's like 15 to 20 minutes just to cover on Iris alone. 
and I don't want to get stuck in that, but pretty much you just get to use your Frost Spirit from level 1, and you get to continue to use that leveling all the way up. Uh, the only caveat I can say is that when you do end up moving Frost Spirit down to your passives from your skills, you just got to make sure you're hitting the F key in order to actually activate the skill itself um, versus just hitting right click. But other than that, everything's the same. Build is going to be as strong as ever. And, um, you know, uh, if I wasn't going to be playing the new character myself, then this is what I would highly recommend. If you are, again, someone who's maybe already played Iris, and you aren't going to buy the Battle Pass, so you're not going to be playing Rosa, and you want just another really, really strong option, then there is Charge Calling Moto. I did a guide on this as well. Um, the guide here that I covered is for the more end-game gearing, or like mid-game gearing, so you're doing a, you know, a few billion damage here. Um, this is going to be the end-gaming er, end gearing setup, but for the gearing basically before this, as you level up, you're pretty much just going for um, minion life as well as just minion critical strike damage and minion um, crit chance and damage, things like that. The only things that you want to make sure you're trying to pick up early are going to be these. Um, we don't need to worry about the candles. There are going to be some mods on your um, memories here. Where did I show them? I'm sure I showed them here. Oh, under the hero traits. So this... Um, these are going to be the traits, but there are these specific memories here that we have um, that actually will give you a or give your minions a portion of your life. And that's pretty much what you want to be doing because everything that the minions are doing, 20% of their life is being added as damage. So you're trying to increase minion life as much as possible, as well as increasing your own life as much as possible so you can transfer it over to your minions. Um, the build transitions really, really well. You know, you're just looking for a lot of um, minion skill levels, things like that. Um, it The build itself did get a minor buff um, with the bonus from Overload going from um, only giving a 20% buff to it now gives a 50% buff. So uh, that's really big right here. This um, adds, um, where did the one actually go here? Yeah, so the bonus that it's getting for overload is now going from 20 to 50 percent. So it's a bit, little bit of a damage increase. Um, you know, the build was already really, really strong. Uh, nothing's really changed in that regard. You know, extremely tanky, and has a nice, clean playstyle. It actually got one of the biggest quality of life updates as well, in the fact that you cannot summon minions or more minions while you already have your max um, amount of minions before you could accidentally like click right click too quickly and basically cause yourself to lose damage because you were resummoning minions before they get attack which was like resetting their attack time um, so with that it's actually going to make the character play a lot more smoothly without running into situations where you're accidentally lowering your damage by clicking your uh, buttons too fast so I'm going to go ahead again leave this link to this video below because nothing really changes for this um, the leveling for him very, very straightforward with minions. They're pretty much just equipping your minion skills, equipping whatever minion damage supports that are on there. Um, it's pretty much just going to match any other um, thing here. The tree doesn't change for leveling or versus endgame. The only thing that changes is the, is the gear. So if you actually just look over the um, tree here and the um, actual mods that we have on the gear... Um, everything is pretty much just going to be the same. You just basically equip these in the order you actually unlock them. Uh, it's all going to be pretty much the same. And last but not least, the class that I'm going to be starting myself uh, is going to be the new hero, Rosa. Um, this character might not end up being very good. We're going to have to see. Um, I think she definitely has some potential, though. I've been looking over some of the new memories and relics for her. I will end up be doing a um, update guide, updated guide on her for basically where I'm at day one if I've made any adjustments based off of my original plans. But based off of what I've seen so far, uh, it does look like once you actually get to a more endgame setup, there is a setup here for Savage Charge with um, this um, Bad Knight role model relic, which basically allows you to... Um, be able to just continually channel as well as um, this basically makes it to where your holy domain moves around you. 
So if you are using a movement skill that is um, basically causing you to move around, your holy domain, instead of it being placed on the ground, is just going to be stuck around you. And you'll be able to basically take advantage of this to get all of the bonuses and benefits from the Holy Dominion with monsters inside of it and all of the damage and extra things that come along with it. Um, but you'll be able to have it move with you and get a bunch of damage bonuses along with it. So because of this, with um, Savage Charge, you can basically be stacking up a ton of block ratio on her in order to get, again, your block chance will already be at 100% um, for both. And your block ratio will be at 80% against bosses um, and 60% against uh, non-bosses. I mean, I guess it'll be at 67 with this uh, one of these. If you do end up not having either of these legendary uh, memories, then you will end up um, just having about, uh, I think it'll be about the same 80% um, block ratio still. So you'll be blocking 80% of the damage. And then with Rosa, you can basically, um, you already have some built-in um, life recovered as soon as you block so you're always going to be getting that life back even after the 20% that you are taking um, For your tree here, um, you're basically just gonna be starting on God of Might most likely you'll end up leveling on this with Like flame slash or just whatever melee skill you get um, Melee leveling is pretty much the same always and then you basically can in Inevitably shift yourself into savage charge using a staff um, I don't think you're going to end up needing to use a shield on Rosa. I think you can very comfortably still get your block ratio as well as your damage and everything using a two-hander. So um, we're going to have to play around with this though. But from basically what I'm seeing with the tree so far, it's the similar, very similar tree to just like a Savage Charge Rayhan, Savage Charge Rayhan, um, where you are getting tenacity, great strength. You're basically just stacking as much physical damage as possible. Um, you are changing things a bit in the onslaughter tree because you are taking a lot of attack block here. I've probably taken more attack block in this tree. Um, you pretty much just want to ensure you're getting to 100%. If you are, then depending on whatever gear you have, take some off or put it back on. Same thing with your cooldown recovery speed. You only need it to be exactly 100%. And that's specifically for this holy dynasty without war. Um, so that you can get your defensive skill cooldowns down to 3 seconds so that you can basically per be permanently at 100% uptime. So you'd probably want a little bit more just to ensure that you're not having to be frame perfect, like in using your defense skill to ensure that it goes off exactly um, at three seconds. But otherwise, pretty much your entire build will be relying on you're just spamming your defense key in order to fully block everything um, with this hero memory. And then you'll have your... Um, setup basically where again you're only taking 20% damage from that plus you have a lot of additional damage reduction from every other sources so the layered defenses that you are getting on the build should be really really strong and she should be able to basically tank a bunch a lot of anything and she has a lot of damage multipliers built in so I'm thinking this attack setup is going to be the way I mean it's really going to come down to how expensive these legendary uh, relics are I'm also going to be working on a like a spell caster version of her her kit because nothing is a tie nothing is specifically tied to attacks on her um, so there might be some potential there as well but pretty much what you're seeing here again a, sa a pretty standard savage charge setup um, along with resurrection war cry um, with frost shield the only difference basically over like a normal rayhan is on our auto defense we are at running agus of fire just for that extra spell block and attack block chance this might be able to be dropped um, if you don't have this memory here you're probably already hitting 100 percent spell and attack block just basically base it off of your tree and what gear you have and ensure you're not going over the cap because it's wasted points same thing goes with the cooldown the most important mod out of everything is the two percent damage skill area and movement speed for recently defeated enemies just for the sake of just actually increasing the speed of clear um, and everything else and then you want the cooldown recovery again if you have the legendary memory and you actually need your defensive skill to be at three seconds otherwise you don't need it and then for the last tree we are using shadow dancer this is for fervor um, as well as basically some extra crit damage against traumatized enemies we do end up having to put one point into this it is actually very very important you put this in before you even get your 36 point talent you do need to have some base trauma damage um, if you don't have a vortex heart for whatever reason and you just need some trauma damage, you can actually throw it on um, You know, you can just craft it onto your necklace or just run like an added physical damage support 
which realistically, because of added physical damage support being in the game, you might end up running that over Mark or something else, or even over Guard if you don't need the extra barrier because of the defenses already on the character. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And um, other than that, you'll also find the links to all the ga um, the max rolls here for the ones that I do have created, as well as the um, build videos that has the more details for the individual builds. Um, other than that, I'll be playing on EU, and I'll probably be streaming here on um, Twitch and YouTube at Coffee BNS. So if you want to come check it out or have any questions, feel free to pop in and I'll be more than happy to answer them. See you in the next one.